So let's look at the different let's look at the different advantages of using highlight hierarchical modularity. So there are several uh, advantages. The first one is that um, hierarchical or modular architectures, they can easily adapt and evolve to changing environmental circumstances. So for example, if you want to add modules, if you remove modules, so your system is very adaptable. So you can easily remove, like for example, this module and the system can still work if, um, if you... Uh, if this is, for example, disrupted or perturbed. Also, if you want to add new modules, you can easily add new ones, and it's it's very it's not very difficult. So here, it's a very structured way, and you only need to add a few connections, and then you have added or inserted a new module into your your graph. So the second one is that. Um, so actually this is the second one. New modules can be added to the system without dr drastically altering the existing elements. So this is adaptability. So this is what I have done here. So I add this module without touching this part. Okay. And then the set, the third one is that there are like, you know, different modeling studies, like for example, Cashton and Allen in 2005. So I'll put the reference below. So they have shown that modular architectures, they naturally arise in systems that must optimize performance under changing environmental circumstances. So uh, this is, you know, like uh, the same point. So basically, if you want, if you have... Um, if your data is dynamic, uh, dynamically changing or evolving, it's better to uh, create a graph or formalize it or structure it in a modular hierarchical manner. Okay. So also the last one is that thanks to independence between subsystems, so these you know uh, modules are independent. The potential of dysfunction or damage to propagate throughout the system and cause catastrophic failures is very uh, reduced, especially if you have a local perturbation, perturbation, for example, to this node, to a node, or an edge in um, in a module, uh, in a single module in your graph. So perturbations to a modular system will have a limited capacity to impact other modules if they are, of course, uh, local. Okay. So you guys have mentioned these points uh, earlier when brainstorming. So you can see that we have different uh, the different graphs. So this one is non-modular. This one is simply like it's a modular graph and this is hierarchically modular. Okay, so now let's move to the second point. So here how to discover the modules of a given graph. So given this graph for example, we want to automatic, uh, automatically Identify how many modules this graph has? Five. Five, yes. So we want to automatically find the nodes that belong to these five modules. Okay. So what kind of approach we can potentially use? Any ideas, guys? So if you look at this, those who have who have Taking machine learning. What does it look like? Clustering. clustering, right? It's a clustering problem. So if you can, um, you know, like if you perform a clustering algorithm on your adjacency matrix of the graph, then you can easily spot out these, you know, uh, small, what we call here. This is a module. So we can call it a module or a community. Also, a cluster of nodes. Okay, so basically, um, the accurate decomposition of graph into modules with high intrinsic connectivity and weaker extrinsic. So this is you know external extrinsic connectivity belongs to uh, to a class of problems that we call in machine learning clustering. Okay. So here we have graph modularity to find modules or discover or detect modules in a graph. Uh, by intersecting machine learning, we can use clustering algorithms and ultimately solve this problem. Okay.